Today for EMN5, we're going to talk about blood and bodily fluid post-exposure prophylaxis in the clinical setting. And the first thing we actually need to determine is, is this even a clinically relevant exposure? For example, if the fluid that the patient came in contact with was saliva, feces, vomit, urine, tears, or sweat, while these are gross, they're not necessarily concerning. And especially if it was with brief exposure to intact skin, then the answer is no, this is not clinically relevant. And you can actually just discharge the patient with no further workup or any kind of prophylaxis. Now, if the fluid is blood or any of these other things listed, the most common thing we see is needle sticks in the ER, and the exposure was to either mucous membranes, non-intact skin, percutaneous, meaning like a needle stick or a bite, or prolonged contact with the skin. So again, if you have this fluid plus this exposure, then the answer is yes, and we go on to see if the patient needs any prophylaxis. For any kind of wound, make sure you provide local wound care, wash it out with soap and water, and irrigate any mucosa or eyes that were exposed. And make sure you document in the chart the information about the source patient. So this is especially appropriate for follow-up. The patient's going to have to go see infectious disease or employee health, and they're going to need to have that link back to the source patient. So make sure you document this in your chart. The next thing to do is to take blood, and you want samples from both the healthcare worker that's coming to you and the source patient if that's available. So things you want to draw specifically are the hepatitis B surface antigen, the hepatitis C antibody, and the HIV 1 and 2 antibody. Now here's some information that you can tell your patient as far as educating them and what their risk of transmission of these diseases are. And this is with percutaneous injury, so like a needle stick. So Hep B is the highest, it's one in three. However, this is for non-vaccinated personnel. If they've had the vaccine, there's basically no chance. Hep C is next, it's about one in 30. And HIV is about one in 300. And again, that's for a needle stick injury. And the nice thing is that for hepatitis B and HIV, we have some good prophylaxis options that can really decrease the risk of transmission, down 75% in Hep B and down 80% in HIV. Now first, just make sure that your patient has their tetanus up to date, and then let's talk about Hep C first because this is actually the easiest in that there's no post-exposure prophylaxis available. There's also no vaccine, so you don't need to ask them about their status. The only thing to do for Hep C is draw the blood work and then have them follow up in 48 hours with ID and employee health for further management and workup. Now, Hep B is one that's probably a little more complex just because there is this issue of the vaccine. And this is a chart by the CDC that helps you decide what should be done for the exposure. But this is a little tricky. You're probably not going to have all this information at midnight on a Saturday when your patient comes to the ER with a needle stick. And it's actually not that important for you that visit in the ER. This is a little bit more for follow-up. So here's the quick and dirty for what you need for the ER. First off, if you have the source patient's information and you know that they're Hep B negative or their blood work comes back that night, then there's nothing else to do. If they're positive or unknown, the next thing is to ask the healthcare worker if they've had the vaccines or not. If they're fully vaccinated with all three doses, there's nothing left to do. If they're not sure or they remember something about being a non-responder, then you should give them the hepatitis B immunoglobulin and the hepatitis B vaccine. So this is really what it boils down to. Just see if they need those two shots when they're in the ER. The next step for them is to follow up again in one to two days with employee health or ID. Let them go through the big chart and see if they need any other management. For HIV, again, first you're going to get the information from the source patient. If they're HIV negative, nothing else to do. If they're positive or it's unknown and it's a clinically relevant exposure, then you can offer them HIV post-exposure prophylaxis. You should actually give the first dose in the ER, preferably within one to two hours of the exposure, and then send them home with a five-day prescription and make sure they follow up in 48 hours with employee health or ID. This is a standard regimen. You should prescribe them two different things. One is Truvada, and then either Valtegravir or Dolutegravir. And remember, for all of this, follow up in 48 hours with employee health. Now, one really nice resource that we have that's available 24-7 is this PEP national hotline, and specifically it's for clinicians. So if you have any questions or it's kind of an odd case or you just don't remember any of this stuff from the PowerPoint, just give them a call. They can go through the case with you and tell you exactly what you should do. If you do have an ID on call, that can be helpful as well. And things you might want to run by them are as if it's a delayed exposure, if the patient has medical comorbidities or is pregnant or lactating, or if they've been on antivirals in the past and they have some known resistance or bad side effects. These are all things that they can be helpful with. 
Okay, let's do a recap. So the first thing to ask is, is this even a clinically relevant exposure? If it's not, send them home. If you do have concerns about it, then you need to draw the blood from both the patient and the source patient, including the hep B surface antigen, hep C antibody, and HIV 1 and 2 antibodies. For hep B, if the source patient is either positive or unknown, your first question is going to be to the healthcare worker to see if they're vaccinated or not. If they're not sure or they're a non-responder, go ahead and just give them the hepatitis B immunoglobulin and the hep B vaccine. For HIV, make sure you remember to give the first dose in the ER if it is a clinically relevant exposure. Try to do that within 90 minutes of exposure and then send them home with a five-day prescription of the following medications and make sure everybody follows up in 48 hours either with ID or employee health. Here are the references and thanks for joining us on EMN5.